punch. Of course, he talks about the very fact that you need to persevere to the very end. He said, because iniquity shall abound. The love of many shall wax cold, but he that shall endure to the end, the same shall be saved. He spoke about hell more than any other person in the Bible. And then he spoke about heaven. In my father's house are many mansions. If it were not so, I would have told you, I go to prepare a place for you. And when I go and prepare a place for you, I will come again and take you unto myself so that you'll be with him forever. And so you find what he has spoken about. And because he spoke about all this, he says, anyone that will build must build on that foundation. Come back to Luke chapter 6. Luke chapter 6. And we're reading here from verse 47. Luke chapter 6, reading from verse 47. It says in verse 47, still building on that foundation. Whosoever cometh to me and heareth my sayings, all that he has said, all that he has taught, all that he has speech, and doeth them. I will show you to whom he is like. He is like a man which built an house and digged deep and laid the foundation on a rock. And when the flood came, arose, and the stream beat vehemently upon that house and could not shake it, for it was founded upon a rock. Verse 49, But he that hears and doeth not is like a man that without a foundation built an house upon the earth. There are people, they don't worry about the foundation. They're not bothered about the landmarks. Repentance, they don't know what that means. Restitution, no, they'll never say sorry to anybody. They might hurt you. They might disobey the word of God. They might deny cardinal things in the word of God. And you challenge them. And you call them to it. They never will apologize. And they never will change. It says all those people, they hear the word of the Lord. And they do them not. They hear about being purified. About being sanctified. They are not going to do it. They are building the religious, a religious sanctuary, a religious house, a religious edifice. And yet, they will not obey the word of God. It says, the flood will come and beat against that house. And the stream will come and beat vehemently against that house. Immediately it fell and the ruin of that house was great irreparable so the lord is telling us then build on the foundation teach what he has taught preach what he has preached stand on what is stood on in matthew chapter 28 reading from verse 18 and jesus came and spake unto them saying all power is given unto me in heaven and in earth. Go ye therefore and teach all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Ghost. Listen to this, verse 20. Teaching them, teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. Have you taught repentance since you've been teaching others? Have you taught restitution since you've been teaching others? And if you're writing and you're teaching but not writing, do you ever write on restitution or do you circumvent? Do you avoid? Do you water it down? Because you yourself, there are some areas of restitution in your life to be made to the church and to your leaders. You have not done that. And because of that, you don't feel at ease to write about restitution, about righteousness. In what righteousness? Righteousness that is transparent. And righteousness in the day and in the night. But we circumvent, we go around, we gloss over it. And we're just teaching religion. 
But the Lord is saying that we teach all things whatsoever he has commanded. Are you confident in teaching sanctification? Holiness of heart, holiness of life, holiness at home, holiness in the place of work, holiness everywhere, teaching them all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And since when did you teach the baptism in the Holy Ghost? Are you baptized in the Holy Ghost yourself? Do you have the power of the Holy Ghost in your life? How can you declare what you don't have? How can you uphold what you don't, what you have not experienced? You must experience it. It is after experiencing it, you are able to tell other people, have you spoken about hell for how many years now? Have you not mentioned hellfire? That all those who die in sin, they have the danger of going to hellfire. Do you believe that yourself? Do you know that yourself? Where is it in the Bible? How can you convince other people with Bible teaching that there is hellfire at the end of a life of sinning? Jesus taught it. He didn't only teach about heaven, he taught about hell. Teaching them to observe all things whatsoever I have commanded you. And lo, on the basis that you do that, on the basis that you are faithful to the word, and lo, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. And somebody there will say, Amen. Amen. John chapter 8. John chapter 8. I'm reading here from verse 30. John chapter 8. We're reading from verse 30. And he spake these words, as he spake these words, many believed on him. But he said, that's not the end of the road. As he spake these words, many believed on him. He said, don't go yet, there's still something more. Verse 31, then said Jesus to those Jews, which believed on him, if he continue, if he continue, if he continue in my word, then are ye my disciples indeed? If ye continue in my watch, then are ye my disciples indeed. Point number two. The falsehood and the danger of liars. Modern day liars. Let's look at Job chapter 24. Job chapter 24. We're looking at it from verse 2. Job 24. We're reading from verse 2. In verse 2, here is what it says. Some remove landmarks. They violently take away the flocks and they feed thereof. It's talking about the people that to take away the landmarks of the scripture. Take away the landmark of Christ take away the landmarks for the church for the flock of God and then they violently take away the minds of the people from Christ that the minds of the people no more are centered on Christ the minds of the people are violently rested away taken away and removed from the Lord and from the watch of the Lord attention then comes on other things Maybe attention comes on them. Maybe attention comes on false doctrine. Maybe attention comes on false hope. They violently take away the flock and they feed themselves. You'll be found a liar before the Lord if you do that. Taking away the landmarks of the word of God, of the Bible, so that you can attract attention to yourself or to false teaching or to tradition. Zephaniah chapter 3. Zephaniah chapter 3. What did he from verse 4? In Zephaniah chapter 3, verse 4, our prophets are light and treacherous persons. Our priests are polluted the sanctuary. They have done violence to the law. They do violence. How did they do violence? They violently misinterpret the word of God. They appear bold against the Lord. Bold against sound doctrine. Bold against the church. And they violently misinterpret the word of God. And they say, that's it. 
we have gone out of the way and we're inviting every other person to come out of the way but you know what the lord is saying the lord is saying that such people that remove the old landmarks judgment will be upon them ezekiel chapter 13 ezekiel chapter 13 see what these liars do see what these false prophets do see what these false teachers do this see what these backsliding preachers backsliding teachers see what they do they don't have the grace of god in their lives to live according to the word of god and because of that they have to tone down because of that they have to change because of that they have to modify the word of god ezekiel chapter 13 we're reading from verse 22 ezekiel 13 verse 22 it says because with lies ye have made the hearts of the righteous sad when you listen to them if you're righteous you're sad when you listen to them if you have any kind of concern for the glory of god you're sad because of their lives because of their false doctrine because of their misinterpretation of the word of god because with lies with false doctrine with ma manipulation of a scripture because with lies ye have made the heart of the righteous sad whom i have not made such such preachers are not walking with god such preachers are not walking in line with the lord the lord says the soul that sinneth it shall die they're not in agreement with that and the lord says except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god they're not in agreement with that and they're going to say something they still read the bible they read those same verses and then they will twist it they put it upside down and then they make jest of it and they laugh and when they do that if you're righteous you are there your heart is pinch it saddens you because with lies ye have made the righteous the heart of the righteous sad whom i have not made sad and strengthened the hands of the wicked strengthen the hands of the backsliders if you are a child of god you say you are a child of god let's say for example your ministry if you're ministering and you make the backsliders uh, the backsliders happy and you make the backsliders cheer you and you make the backsliders say yes that's it i agree with you and they never they are not convicted of their sins they do not look at their evil because you are a backsliding minister yourself and you are making the backsliders happy making the sinners happy and you turn the word of god upside down those are the modern day preachers that's what they do they strengthen the hands of the wicked that he should not return from the wicked his wicked way by promising him life and you think about everything you do in the church you think about in your house fellowship the people there who are not born again when they listen to you the backsliders there they really congratulate you are they happy with you and they say wonderful you are not like you know so and so and if you are a, maybe a zonal leader or you are a local pastor a church location pastor how do you preach what do you tell the people the backsliders and the sinners do they come in and go back the same way as they came any area you are ministering in the church when you finish your ministry the sinners there are they happy or convicted the backsliders there are they happy or convicted if your ministry is not convicting backsliders it's not convicting sinners and you are in agreement with them and they're in agreement with you and you make them remain sinners and you make them remain backsliders you're not serving the lord that's what he says he says you are a liar you are promising life to the people that are living in sin that's why all those liars there's going to be judgment of god upon them look at jeremiah chapter 23 jeremiah chapter 23 we're reading from verse 13 jeremiah chapter 23 and we're reading from verse 13 jeremiah 23 verse 13 i have seen fully foolishness 
in the prophets of Samaria. They prophesied in Baal and caused my people Israel to err. They caused the people of God to go astray in our ministry. It must not cause people to go away from holiness, away from righteousness, away from readiness for the kingdom of God, readiness for Christ's coming. If you're ministering and the people don't see anything in your ministration to make them ready and to make them prepared for the kingdom of the Lord, you're not serving the Lord aright. It says in verse 14, I have seen also in the prophets of Jerusalem an horrible sin. They commit adultery and they walk in lies. They, they strengthen also the hands of evil doers that none does return from its wickedness. They are all of them unto me as Sodom and the inhabitant thereof as Gomorrah. And of course, if they are like that, the same judgment that came upon them will come upon, uh, that came upon the Sodomites will come upon them as well. Second Peter chapter 2. Second Peter chapter 2. We're reading from verse 1, Second Peter chapter 2, and we're reading from verse 1. It tells us in chapter 2, verse 1, talking about these false prophets, talking about these deceivers, talking about these people that do not have the glory of God at heart, and do not have bringing sinners out of sin. And making backsliders to return unto the Lord. They do not have that in heart. They have another agenda. They have another plan. They have another purpose. The false prophets. The false ministers. The false teachers. And they are false believers. They are not real believers. Second Peter chapter 2. Verse 1. But there were false prophets also among the people. Even as there shall be false teachers among you who privately, privately shall bring in damnable heresies. Privately, that's what they do. Behind the coaching, that's what they do. They bring in damnable heresies. Things different from the word of God, from the teaching of the word of God. Even denying the Lord that bought them, they deny the price of salvation. They deny the way to eternal life. And they deny the Lord that bought them. And they bring upon themselves swift destruction. And many shall follow their pernicious ways. You're seeing that nobody will follow. Don't worry yourself, pastor. We know the truth. We know the right thing. Let a false prophet preach their message. And let false teachers preach their message. And let false ministers minister. No problem. We know the truth. No, not at all. Many shall follow their pernicious ways. By reason of whom the way of truth shall be evil spoken of. Through and through covetousness. Shall they with faint, with faint, with faint words make merchandise of you. Whose judgment now of a long time lingereth not, and their damnation slumbereth not. It says that such people eventually they come under the judgment of God. Perdition comes to them. You cannot teach other people, lead them to hell, and go to heaven yourself. You cannot destroy the lives of other people, and then God will build you up. The grace of God that you have not allowed other people to have, you cannot have. God is a faithful God. You cannot send other people to hell, multitudes to hell, and then God takes you to heaven. The people of the world may call you any name, a bishop, or bishop, or prophet, overseer, whatever name, it doesn't matter. If you lead people to hell, you go to hell, you follow them to hell yourself. Look at verse 19. While they promise them liberty, they're promising other people, be at liberty. There's no danger at all. Do whatever you want to do. While they promise other people liberty, they themselves are the servants of corruption. For of whom a man is overcome of the same is he brought into bondage if you are overcome by adultery.